Welcome back to the photo sessions, everyone. I know we've been a little bit off and on, but here we are with John on the other line. Hey, John, how are you? Oh, I'm holding up okay for an old codger. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we have a very fun session. I've been excited about this one, the point of view. And John has created this first slide for us, and then we'll kind of jump into some pictures that I took over the last couple of weeks, and we'll talk about them. So, what's going on here, John? Yeah, I, I kind of saved this one for the end or towards the end because it's one of my favorite ideas for for new photographers to think about. Um, we our brains have this inherent bias, this cognitive bias of how high our eyes are when we're looking at another subject. So, Danielle, how old were you when you reached your current height? Uh, I bet I was around 20. 20? Okay. 18. So, so if you live to be 80 or 90, then you'll spend 20 years below your current high level, but you'll spend, what is that, 60 to 70 years at this high level, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So our brains have this idea that things that are below our eye level are things that are smaller than us, like when we're looking at children, you know, when we're an adult looking down at a child, and then vice versa, when we're a child looking up at an adult, mm -hmm. the, adult the adult is the stronger you know, uh, person in, in that view, whereas, you know, the adult looking down at the child, the child you know, is, is smaller and weaker, so the person thinks that looking down means that the subject is smaller and weaker. Mm -hmm. And that that carries over into our photographs. So depending on where the camera level is in relation to the subject's eye, it really influences the way that we interpret the photograph. Mm -hmm. So I put this slide together with three of your photos that we're going to look at today. The top one, the camera is below looking up. And then the middle one is right at eye level, and then the lower photo it is looking down. Mm -hmm. It gives you kind of an idea of the three different ways that you can approach your subject and, and make the viewer feel different things when they look at the subject. All you right. can take the exact same subject and photograph it in these three angles, and you'll get three completely different photographs because of this. Yeah. Yeah, even just those two pictures of Oso, I wish I would have gotten one straight on. Um, but just those yeah. two are so different. Yeah, yeah, it really gives you the idea of how, you know, looking up makes the subject feel stronger and bigger just because of that inherent unconscious brain bias that we have. Right. Just looking down, looking down makes Oso look smaller and weaker. Mm-hmm. But he's and pretty intimidating in that top one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's funny. You can take a little toddler wearing a diaper and photograph him from below, and he, he looks like a Godzilla. <laughs> but this also comes into play when you're taking portraits or when you're taking uh, a photo of a person or an animal that you want the, the person looking at the photo to feel a connection with. You can photograph them exactly at their eye level, mm -hmm. and it helps the it really helps the viewer feel a connection with that with the subject that's in that photograph. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we'll cruise on to the first picture. I'm not actually sure what the first one is. Oh, so I thought um, I have two different, and you've, I don't know if you've seen these pictures yet, but this one, I thought I would just um, get a picture. So this is obviously straight on, just the eye level of mm -hmm. our, our pretty little wild horse scenes, little things that hang around the ranch. And it, I wasn't even planning on using these, but the contrast between this picture and the next one I'll put up was so, I, it just it surprised me how different it made these little images on here. So with this one, I feel like the horses almost feel more alive than in that first one. 
Yeah, this one gives you kind of the, the feeling of strength of the horse running and how powerful their muscles are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in general, it's, it's not a good idea to kneel down in a herd of running horses, so I, <laughs> I like the way you did this. Right, yeah. I was like, I'll choose to be safe on this one. <laughs> Even though I did get uh, there's a picture coming up of Chief that I did kneel down next to, but luckily he had just eaten lunch and he was nice and mellow. <laughs> <laughs> This reminds me of the, the very first football game that I photographed as a high school photographer. I, I knelt down in front of the, the piece of paper that the players run through. Oh. They, ran through the, they ran through the paper, and then I realized they were going to run me over. <laughs> so I, I jumped up and turned around and ran, and I, so I ran off the field with all the football players. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You must have gotten a good picture, though, out of that. I don't remember. I just remember fearing for my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so between these two pictures, what one do you see as being, I know there's not like a, a right or wrong way to take a picture, and I like how you kind of say that, but out of these two, what is the best point of view for this certain subject that I was taking a picture of? Well, for me personally, as an animal lover, I would like to, to look at animals eye to eye. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of like the first one. I feel more of a connection to the horses in the first photo, whereas in the second photo, the horse looks like something powerful that's running past me that I'm just going to sit silently and watch. Right, yeah. Yeah. All right. Go to the next. Oh, it needs it put side by side. So here's here's where Chief was kind enough not to trample me. <laughs> And I guess okay. that's the picture that, yeah, you, you put in the slide. So I was just kind of using this as an example to see from the above and below. Even though it's not the same subject, you can definitely get those different feelings you were talking about. Yeah, with with Chief there, um, you know, looking up from below is, is a totally different photograph than it would be if you were above him looking down at him. Mm-hmm. As you are with Oso there. I know. I was trying to find a a good way to get a picture of Chief from above, but then I realized, oh, I should probably be on him for that. So, but I think I have a picture um, coming up of when I was out on a ride with Chinook from above. Um, okay. Let's see what I have next. Oh, so this is kind of a. Similar one, but this is that one that you, that's in the slide, isn't it? Uh, my screen hasn't changed yet. I'm still looking at Oso and Chief. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be okay, Oso. It's Oso from below on my screen yep. now. Is that the one? Yep, that's the one we're on. And okay. this is the one in the slide that you created, right? This is just the full picture of it? It is, yeah. Another interesting thing about this photo is it's, um, it's uh, the composition is informal. Mm-hmm. And that, add, that really adds to a sense of motion or movement in the photo by having mm-hmm. Oso be off center. Right. Yeah. And I think that was <laughs> that was luck for me because he was so wanting to play with that toy that he didn't stand still for long. So I had to get down really quick and snap the shot or maybe I wasn't even looking through the lens and just snap the shot. <laughs> yeah, in an instant, like, instance like this, you can uh, just pre-focus your lens to a set distance, say two feet or three feet and hold the camera down on the ground and when the subject is at that distance, then push the button without even looking through the camera. Nice. Yeah, that would be Yeah, I, I like this one. I like his tongue. and you yeah. see a little bit of eyes there. Mm-hmm. Those piercing blue eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's really important with animals to be able to see the eyes in the photograph. Yeah. Yeah, here's that eye level one of mystery. And I think, um, so this obviously would be informal as far as composition goes. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And would you say that the one eye 
is it still makes you feel connected, right, since even though it's not both of his eyes right at you? I, I really, I think it does. It, it works for me when I look at the photo, the, the camera angle looking straight on at the eye really makes me feel a connection with the, mm -hmm. the soul that's behind that eye. Yeah. And I played around, um, I was playing around with apertures, so I knew I, I wanted those trees kind of in there in the background, but for really his face to be in focus. Yeah, they don't distract too much from the eye, for me. Um, you could have blurred them out a little more by using a smaller aperture. Mm-hmm. But I, I like it the way it is. <laughs> All right. See, so you're, you're starting to see different tools and different ways of photographing now. Yeah, and now that I've had a couple of weeks to kind of let some stuff settle in, um, just even when I'm taking pictures on my own, I, I think about how I take a picture a lot more than I used to. You know, I don't oh, just good. put it on a setting and go, oh, that'll do. I probably spend five minutes, like, getting that perfect setting, and I'm like, okay, now I'm ready to capture this image. <laughs> mm, excellent grasshopper. <laughs> you have done well. <laughs> So we've seen this picture before, um, and this is the storm. So what would you say? I mean, I'm above him, but it's also, I feel very connected with his eyes, when I look, like with him when I look at this picture. Yeah, it, um, he's got a really, a really strong stare there. He's really trying to make a connection with you. And so um, it's powerful the way it is, but I think it might have, might be even more powerful if you had gone down a little bit lower. Mm-hmm. A little bit closer to his eye level or her eye level. Yep. Yep. He, he's a he. <laughs> and then here's a case where we can use one of those other tools that we learned about. Um, that water bottle with that, with that white emblem on it is kind of distracting. Yeah. So that's something we could crop out. Yes. Oh, wow. That would really change that picture. Yeah. Yeah, then you wouldn't be able to take your eyes off of the dog's eyes. Because uh, that is your eye. Of af I mean, my eye almost goes to that white and then goes to Linus. Because <laughs> that yeah. is just a big distracting blob, isn't it? Yep, and it's because of how bright it is. If, if it were mm -hmm. darker or if it, you know, if it wasn't there, then you wouldn't hardly be able to remove your eyes from Linus's eyes. Mm -hmm. I think that's been my... That's what I've noticed in most of these pictures that you've offered suggestions on is that I'm not, um, I'm, I haven't quite gotten the eye for, ooh, that's really bright and that's probably going to take my viewer's eye away from what I really want it to look at. So that's going to be what I really work on with my last little set of pictures that we're going to look at next week is making sure that there's no elements. Yeah, it, it's sort of like um, you, know, you start with training wheels and then you graduate up from that. So right now, um, you've progressed to where you now notice it, and now the next step will be where it, it will become natural for you to move your camera or to crop the photo later to eliminate those distractions. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, what do I have next? Oh, this is that one... Um got on a ride of Elk Meadows, and so this one, you're going to laugh, because this was taken with my little old-school flip phone, <laughs> but I thought that it was very appropriate to put it uh, with this, this session, the point of view session. Okay, I think I know what photo you're talking about, but I'm still looking at Linus. Oh, hopefully in moments it will pop up. <laughs> Our delay is getting longer. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Don't don't concern yourself with what tool you use to make the photo. A flip phone works great. A cell phone works great. A point and shoot works great. Um, the saying is the the best camera out there is the one that's in your pocket. Yep, that is if you, true. If you don't have a camera with you, you're not going to take any pictures. So if it's something convenient to carry, you're going to take more pictures. 
And so would this be uh, obviously probably in, informal as far as composition goes? It is, yeah. Look, kind of blur your vision and look at the photo, and what what is the brightest part? Um, that like kind of grassy pot. Well, I guess either his mane or that grassy spot right above his ear, like to the left a little bit. Oh no, that's probably the sky up there. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> well, there's a little bit of sky in there, but uh, for me, the the brightest part that attracts my eye is the horse's mane. Mm-hmm. And so if you draw your lines in there uh, for your rule of thirds, that, the main falls where that crosshatch would be in the oh, left okay. third. Right, okay. So, it, so it's uh, a well-composed, informal composition. And and it's, I guess, the now I'm noticing also that the, I don't know how I got that trail centered in between his ears, and then... <laughs> It kind of leads you out of the picture, which is kind of what like a leading line is supposed to do, right? Well, if you look, there's there's uh, a line where dark green meets light green, and then another line, diagonal line where light green meets the, the brown of the trail, mm-hmm. and then left of, left of the trail, there's another line where the green meets the dark green, and those all converge at a point that is in that upper crosshatch third. Okay. Kind of like the train tracks disappearing in the distance, the yeah. tail moves off in the distance, and so those two elements are the two things that attract my eye. Okay. Yeah, it was well pretty, then. Yeah, I I really enjoyed this picture, and I was I always am surprised when I when my camera or my phone is the only camera I have, and I'm like, well, I just I just have to capture this, and then I look at it, I'm like, oh, that's not that bad, a little phone, good job. You know, I made my living off photographs for decades now, and I still take photos with my phone, too. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good uh, lesson. Just don't be afraid to take a picture, even if it is with your old flip phone, because you could get a nice image like this. I really like this picture. A good um, image brings back good memories. Yep, exactly. This is this is my happy place. If I need to go there, I break the <laughs> Up. <laughs> or this this next picture is similar to uh, Linus again, a little Linus ear in there. And this, so w- what is this point of view called? Like the point of view of the subject, I guess? Yeah, I'm still looking at two horses' ears. Gosh darn it, sorry. I'm not taking oh. the... Second delay into consideration. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is interesting. I this is a very creative photograph. Back out of it so I can look at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious to see what what you see going on in this picture because when I took it, I was just like, oh, interesting shot. But I'm curious to see kind of what your eye does when you look at it. Yeah, to me, it's a little confusing. My eye keeps bouncing around trying to find one solid focal point. Mm-hmm. The the issue I think I'm having is that the ear, the part that's in focus, is also dark. Yeah. And, and so my eye kind of moves past that, looking for something light that's in focus. Right, and then nothing can focus. <laughs> nothing that's light, yeah. Yeah, or nothing light is in focus, yeah. So it's very creative. I, I have a little confusion when I look at it, kind of bouncing around trying to make sense of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I still like it. And it gives you a dog's point of view of a river trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was my my main goal. And obviously composition kind of went down the drain on that one, but <laughs> kind of getting like, what, what Linus was looking at. <laughs> yeah, like I said, rules are just... To be broken, so don't worry about it. So I wonder. So if I would have maybe done a wider aperture and there was more in focus to what Linus was looking at, would that make this a less, you know, kind of odd picture? Um, I think that would have attracted your attention away from Linus and more towards the the river. Mm-hmm. Um, which is one way to approach it. Another way to approach it would be 
I'm wondering if you back up about 12 inches and move to the right slightly, if you could have that light blue color all the way around minus his head. Mm, yeah. So that there would be kind of a halo effect and be a, a light area all the way around your subject. Yeah, I like that. Well, darn it, I'll just have to go back to the Big Hole River and take another picture. <laughs> all right. Well, if you don't want to take the picture, you can take me and I'll, I'll take the picture. <laughs> well, that's the last for point of view that I have. Um, and I know this wraps up our our whole photography mentorship um, other than our last session, which is going to be me combining all of these incredible tools that I've got in my, my toolbox now. Is there any advice you give me going out into the world and using it all together? Well, the best advice I can give you is to experiment and practice and play and have fun. Um, don't look at it as homework. Just look at it as a different way of playing mm -hmm. and make, make it something that's fun. I'm, I'm curious of, of the of the tools that we've given you in your toolbox now. Do you have any of the tools that kind of stand out stronger to you personally than, than some of the other tools, or are they all about the same? You know, I really liked the emotional um, sessions that we did, the emotional components of photography. I think that I learned the most out of the, well, I mean, every single session I learned, you know, 10 times more than I thought I was going to going into it. But the technical, the button part really opened up my world to actually being able to utilize the second part of the the, session, the mentorship, which was the emotional side, because obviously if I, you know, didn't know what my aperture setting would be to create kind of an effect of a point of view, then I, you know, the picture would turn out like this, which is I actually took this before the mentorship. So that's interesting that I think my other ones, I don't know if you agree with me, but are probably a little more, uh, let's see. Like these ones are maybe composed a little bit better than that one of Linus. Well, the the way I look at it is the technical side may not be as, as interesting, but it, it, it really forms the foundation that enables you to approach the emotional side mm -hmm. with more, uh, more ability and more creativity. Right. And that's, that's definitely how I've, um, how I've felt over these past what, six or eight weeks, you know, the first three sessions were, like, every time I went in to take a picture, it was like, oh, wow, that can that can be how my picture looks if I just change my f-stop, you know, down that much. So that was really exciting for me to be able to actually produce a kind of picture that I knew that I wanted to, like, you know, with the flower really in focus and everything else really blurry. That was really exciting, the aperture session for me. And then coming into these, the more emotional side of photography has also opened my eyes into, you know, how to situate your subject and how to make sure that there's not something in that left corner that's just drawing your viewer's eye away. So I think... I mean, that was a long answer to your question, but I, <laughs> I really do think every single one of them has played into the other for me. So. Yeah, you know, it's true even for myself. Um, when, when I was first learning photography, everybody is sort of intimidated by the technical side. They, everyone just wants to, to put their camera on automatic and let the camera do the thinking. Mm -hmm. But there's those three simple tools that we've learned, um, simple relative term, um, <laughs> the three tools that we learned on the technical side are fairly easy to, to figure out if you practice them a couple of times. And, and by having those tools under your belt, it really opens up the other side, the creative side. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, we arranged the sessions the way we did. Yeah, I think it flowed really nice and I think it it was a perfect culmination of knowledge um, to get to where I am right now and then um, 
for this next week to go out and get some pictures. Hopefully the weather will be nice so I can <laughs> some nice pictures around the ranch or else um, I'll just get creative. <laughs> All right, I look forward to, to seeing your, your growth and your photography. Yeah, I'm excited too. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this session. And be sure to come back and join us next week for the final session of this mentorship between John Ashley and myself. And thank you very much, John, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, thanks, Danielle. Bye. Bye-bye.